okay, an emergency recording. I have, <laughs> uh, I managed to corner Greg Hartley. You guys are busy. It is hard to get a hold of you or do anything else. And, you know, I, there's a rumor that there's a trial going on right now. Do you, you hear anything about that? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, every t everybody keeps telling me there's somebody important, but every time I turn it on, all I see are these actors. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think you were just, um, um, expressing your feelings that you watch nine hours of testimony nine hours yep yeah. i've watched nine hours in preparation for this week's show mm. the way we work is i'm the guy who goes and finds the clips so part of the reason i think we've had some success is because we find some. body language loaded clips not just clips mm -hmm. and this guy is one of the most complex people i've ever tried to unfold because he can go forever and ever and ever on one topic with one expression so it's it's really interesting to watch him. But yeah, I watched nine hours. I cut that down to about 28 clips. And then I kept cutting back. And I think I'm down to about 17 plus baseline right now. But that's, we're building a show for the week. So Awesome. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that, obviously. Now, you were on last Friday. You do a, a weekly segment with Newsmax. And right. you're kind enough to tell me ahead some of the time. And, you know, I try to catch it. Yeah. Um, I, I was, you know, truthfully, I was, I was kind of griping a little bit about it. <laughs> I, I, I will not um, be super mean, but I understand that their requirements are um, sound bites and they're not oh, about yeah, yeah. any kind of in-depth coverage. I very much <laughs> like the in-depth coverage and <laughs> want to get into it, but I, I want to kind of go over it because there's things that I feel like he completely missed and it might hey, be before before to... before you alienate 50 percent of your folks let me say this to them i get this all the time oh my god you're on newsmax <laughs> i always say yeah and i've been on cnn and nbc and squad right. and about 50 different things about every major network and i'm always talking about body language mm -hmm. and that's the same for all people it just depends so some people hate me for going on there they're the guys are good to me they give me a good chance to oh, shout out what we do and great place yeah yeah, they're good. I mean, it's body language. I, I don't care if it's if it's there, right. if it's somewhere else. I mean, it, it's perfectly fine with me. Yep. Good guys. Um, yep. But I'm still going to gripe. <laughs> <'Cause it's laughs> yeah, they all sound bites, though. I'll tell you. I'll give you a great story as soon as you get through that. So one time, a long time ago, when Hillary Clinton was running for president and she had a meltdown, you remember that? When she had the big emotional oh, the, moment. Well, wait. Oh, the moment, or when she passed out in the park, or I'm confused. no. This is this is when she was running in the primaries with Barack, I I, as I recall. Okay. And she had a big emotional moment, and there was a big to do in those days. Glenn Beck was on CNN, and I did CNN all the time in those days, mm -hmm. like, because I live in Atlanta, and I was doing headline news CNN. I thought Beck TV. was on Fox. He was later, but he was on CNN back this, oh, in wow. these days. Okay. And I was I was doing CNN, and he brought me on, and he said, "Say so, tell me how you know it's real." And I said, "Well, look at her." Her head tilts down to her right as she gets emotional. You start to see her eyes kind of flutter. And then her whole body language changes because when you hold your head over, said, well, what causes her body language to lean over? And I said, well, when you got 13 pounds of dead weight at the top of your neck, he let me, he cut me off right there and said, I always knew it, 13 pounds of dead weight. So they always are after that right sound bite. It's the nature of news, I think. Oh, yeah, of course. Totally. <laughs> Makes sense. And I'm sure a lot of people would agree on both sides of the aisle, actually. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right, so this is the first segment I skipped a little. You know that it's not true, and you know that it's meant as a web. It's just to, it's to slice you up. It's to bring you down. It's to demean you. It's to bring you into a place where you start to believe that there's something wrong with you. So what is Johnny Depp's body language signaling to the court and the world? I'm joined now by behavior and body language expert and former U.S. Army interrogator. Look at that fancy Greg suit. Here. Greg, that first clip, what do you make of it? Well, first of all, this is a beautiful train wreck for body language people. We'll get two hours out of this one thing <laughs> during the week at the behavior <laughs> panel. Will. But what we, what we see here is he has a baseline that's fairly droning as he speaks. <laughs> he's a little more animated because he's talking about something he's passionate about here. He doesn't illustrate, meaning punctuate his thoughts at all with his hands. That's his style, his kind of baseline. He uses his forehead. And if you notice, he'll raise his forehead when he's saying. Now, okay, that was one comment that I thought was interesting. You, you talked about the forehead, and I'm going to interrupt at different points. Sure, but, yeah. Um, I, I was doing an interview with somebody, and forgive me, I can't remember his name. I'd have to look it up. But he does a lot of analysis of people and running it through, like, different programs. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about Steve Carell. 
mm -hmm. for some reason. But he was mentioning that the reason why Steve Carell could play a character like Michael Scott, who is kind of a repulsive character. I mean, he's a, a horrible boss and everything, right. but still be likable is because of his expressive forehead and yep. eyebrows specifically. And I thought it was very interesting you said that about Johnny Depp because he is constantly oh he's master shifting so, it every which way. So a couple of things there are there are people who are known for their ability to control muscles and not before Spacey was in so much trouble he had I used to mm. say he had the most masterful control of his forehead. If you ever watched it, go and look at the Kaiser Sose thing and mm. all of that. He had a concrete brow, no movement at all. He'd move his lower face and not his upper face. Really, it's his stock and trade. And then you see Johnny Depp, who has independent muscle control over his face in a way I've never seen anyone. Go watch Willy Wonka, for God's sake, and look at the number of muscles that guy can control in his face. And I don't know that he's doing it saying, okay, muscle, you know, he's not doing the facial action coding system and saying, I'll raise this muscle. I think he's in character. And when he's in character, mm -hmm. this complexity of character that he's doing, the guy is, in my opinion, probably one of the best actors of our time. Well, um, you know, Spidey, right? Who's doing the behavioral yes. arts channel now. Yep. And yep. Yep. Uh, he has stated, and I, I really do agree with him. One thing that people don't understand about Johnny Depp is he's an extreme introvert. Oh, you can see it. You can see it. And look at his baseline. You can't miss it. Exactly. And I think the reason why he's so expressive is he's over the top. Like if you look at his characters, they're almost extreme examples pushing it away. So he, he disappears into a character. Yeah. So he doesn't have to face the world directly. It's like a, a, a constant costume. And I could see that coming out of abuse as a child. Well, and I don't know, you know, I, you know me, I, I look at what I can see and try to figure out sure. what it means. I don't ever go that deep. Of course, I do when I'm trying to get somebody to talk. I may poke and prod <laughs> a little more than I do when I'm reading. But what I would say when I watch him is he has been masterful in so many different things and he disappears in the character. Why? I'm not even going to hit that, but he disappears into character in a way that I don't think many people can. You know, I did some theater when I was young and I was always impressed with people who could turn into someone else and you forget who they are. And he mm -hmm. can certainly do it. And, you know, he's got such a huge following. But the masterful control of muscles in your face, if it's intentional, it's even more powerful than if it's him saying something. Interestingly, most people would tell you he's pretty boring to watch in this interview because he's just, he drones on, he's got a baseline that he's used in more recent interviews, like uh, some awards interviews and that is kind of a droning, uh, da, da, da. he rolls along like that. He uses his forehead to accent everything well. It depends, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. He rarely uses his hands and he does what I call searching for change, which you find in a lot of people who may be insecure or introverted, looking down left as they have an internal conversation down right for how it's going to impact. And then only making eye contact when they have something that they think is important for you to get. And he is masterful at that. If you watch him, he'll do the searching for change and then come back to nod. And he does that stammer thing just before he hits a point. Well, it was for, for 40, 40, and you look right at you. Now, mm. that's, we, I always, as I always say, that the organism does what made the organism successful. That's been good for him. So that lack of hand movement, except for when he really wants to drive a point home. Now, the question for me, Eric, becomes, is it a product or is it really him? Because See, that's the, th that's the thing. That's uh, the problem. I, I've seen Johnny Depp for a lot of years. Yep. And when you talk about his, his voice, Sorry, it, 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 there's a little bit of a vibe of that put upon voice, like, you know, Madonna getting the fake uh, English accent for a little while. What it reminds me, too, is uh, are you familiar with uh, Kevin Klein, the actor? Yep, yep. Kevin Klein has a tendency to speak in this um, actor kind of English. It's, it, it's, a, it's um, a, a theatrical voice. And I right. think that Johnny Depp has a theatrical voice. And yeah. is doing like you're seeing going, oh, yeah, that's Jack Sparrow. There was a, a, a he has a slurring drunken quality to, to a degree, right? But he's also going slower now. When you're watching nine hours, were you also watching the cross ex examination? Very big difference in the two. He lightened right up on some of that, didn't he? Well, when you start accusing a guy of some things, then oh, you, course, you get yeah. fight or flight. And what we see is fight or flight is going to hit all people, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. who you are. I mean, you can pretend, I don't care how great an actor you are. If you don't have the the space in your head for having been accused of X, Y, and Z, yeah, then you're going to get some fight or flight. 
And we, we mm. see some of it in, in these in these videos. As a matter of fact, when I cut clips, I was careful to pick a lot of cross to go with, you know, the, the structure we're putting in this show, you'll see direct and cross. Direct is practiced, rehearsed. We all know about that. We know how that works in preparing for, for testimony. But then when you get to cross, even if you've prepared, there's a certain amount of, you know, you're going to feel it. And I think we see it there. But I do think the guy, when I watch that droning kind of thing, I hear him on tape, and he's animated, but he's more emotional in those times when I hear him on tape. And most of us, if we were to record all of our interactions with our significant others, we might find ourselves more animated than we would like on tape too. So I'm always there might, amazed. Like, there might be a statement or something like, I'm yeah. coming right down. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, we, uh, um, yeah. There's always an embarrassing moment. Okay, let's go for another minute. Now, I will also say so he does, has you more know, control we... over muscles than most anyone I've ever seen in my this life. One. That part right there, I definitely wanted to capture with you. Okay. Because I feel like he let that go. And what you've interviewed a lot of people. You've seen a lot of people. You've yeah, been body yeah, language few, for more than a, a few. few minutes here. And you said... Yeah the most muscle control you've ever seen in your life? Yes. So I, I'll give you a great example. I can do that. I can control grief muscle. Try it. Not everybody can. It's kind of an accomplishment among body language people. They'll say, do that. You'll notice on the show, Scott will say, grief muscle, Greg, yeah, and I'll do again. it. Well, and it's just, a, it isn't a yeah. muscle. It's a, it's a series of five muscles that come together. Darwin and, and, and um, Duchesne called it the grief muscle for short, just for, for brief way to mm -hmm. call it, but it's just an arching of muscles. And we see it in people in grief or, you know, duress and that kind of thing. Anyway, he is doing some of that, has his forehead up and some of that and raises his eyebrows at the same time. Just to give you an example, when he says mm -hmm. in the bed, in our bed, I don't know how he does it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just don't know. Even if you're in grief, raising your brows in grief is tough. So he's just and the Willy Wonka, if I recall the scene correctly, if you want to see mm -hmm. a masterful piece of facial expression and fleeting emotions moving across his face in rapid succession, it's when the father character dies, I think, if I recall correctly. In his face, just it's astounding how much emotion he can move through his face in rapid succession. So. See, and I wonder, and uh, some of the, you know, when I said uh, abused childhood and stuff, that's what he said. I'm going with what right. he said and just right. Yep. Yep. defaulting. I don't feel like he was being deceptive when he described his life growing up with his mother. It no, I in, in, in the nine hours that I watched, I don't think that was the case either. It's when he's talking about his father only showing emotion when he punched a wall, those kinds of things. Yeah, it sounds like his, and I, candidly, I like him as an actor. Most actors, I don't go look up their backstory and try to learn who <laughs> they are because I'm just not that guy. But I like him as an actor. But yeah, I mean, when you watch all this and you see there's that and you see all the craziness going on in their relationship, wow, gives you some material to work with for sure, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and I'm just wondering, like, you know, you mentioned the grief muscle, right? Yeah. What if his life was a grief muscle? And yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but it's like if your baseline is to suffer a lot of grief in your life, then sure. you might be able to do one or two extra expressions because you've been suffering you know, it's a good, good point. I, I'll say when Scott and I recorded, sorry to step on you, uh, no, Eric, but, but when Scott and I recorded body language tactics, one of my, one, my best friend, short of my brother in the world was lying in the hospital after surgery and never recovered. Oh. And you can see it. If you go watch those videos, you can see it in my forehead because there's a little arch right there. It just doesn't go away. The other thing is to realize that you can't miss all these lines I have in my forehead from using it to be angry and <laughs> aggressive and all that. In my life. So, but happy too. <laughs> yeah, I'm a happy guy. It's just I'm good at playing the bad guy. All right. This is him talking. It's another segment in it. After you said, let's drown her before we burn her, Mr. Depp, you yeah. said, I will f her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. That's what you said that you would do after you burned her and after you drowned her. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, on, on that one, I don't... Here's the, the problem. You know, yes, oops, yeah, it's bad, but you also know it's Monty Python. Yeah, well, there's two things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's Monty that, Python. That's 
<laughs> this was not after any. So here's what I've learned by watching the case. This mm -hmm. was in 2013 when they were yet, not even yet married. I mean, it was just kind of a, and right. it was him and Paul Bettany. Apparently they may, I don't remember this exactly, but they may or may not have been using some substance at that oh, time. Oh, they and for sure were. Back they, 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 yeah. they talked about, uh, yeah. he admitted that, yes, they, they did drugs. They, they're <laughs> That's one thing I found out about this trial is, did you know that Johnny Depp has a habit? Oh, yeah, or two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so at the end of the day, what is interesting about this is watch the change in his face. Mm -hmm. His face draws, his mouth gets narrow. Um, if you watch, and um, I'll have somebody beat me up for saying he looks down and right because he's looking. Remember, this court is using computer screens to show evidence. Mm -hmm. And he looks at the computer screen, but when he's answering the question, his eyes dart not to the computer screen, but down right, which we associate with emotion. He does a little bit of that searching thing. His animated voice comes, his pitch changes a couple of, I, I'm not a sound guy, but a couple of notes up to make it so it's not, oh, droning, it's more, yeah, yes. And it's more clear. That makes me think, hmm, hmm. When you punch somebody, they come out of that droning and come back out and do something. You also notice, we always talk about it on the behavior panel, cadence shifts mean something. And when that cadence shift goes, see his head move more rapidly and more jerky, that's adrenaline. Adrenaline's hitting him for some reason. And, you know, this guy asked me the same thing. What's the reason? Don't know. Just know it's either that that he thinks is damning or there may be something that follows on. And we can see it in it. Now, what's interesting about it, though, is he does not come across as deceptive. He comes across no. as uncomfortable, but yeah. he's not denying anything. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't and deny anything. there's a combative um, quality to it when he said, you certainly did. You know, yeah. it, there's a little that, uh, um, good morning, Mr. Rottenborn. You know, and it starts yeah. off, it's like, yeah. okay, and they're off. <laughs> well, I think and that's he, part of what makes me think it's a character. You know I mean? Mm. And just because it's a character doesn't mean he's lying. I say this to people over and over and over. If mm. I'm more comfortable as the character than I am as self, what makes the organism su successful, the organism's going to do, you know? It's just oh, you know what? Nature. That's a, a great point, too. Because overall, I think he's being truthful. I, I do think he's deceptive points. I, I'm going to share something with you, which is the most interesting part of all this testimony I saw in is during direct. And I'll see if you get a feeling or a reading on that, but it has to be incredibly difficult to hold up for two and a half days. Yes. Of testimony and, and then across that's a day and a half without being truthful. I hate to say it, but it's like, it's so much easier to hold up and, you know, be, um, not have the cognitive load of lying. I don't know if I could hold up that long. So I, it makes me think he is overall being honest. Well, I will, I'll withhold my final judgment until we go through some sure. details, but I will say, because here's the interesting piece about the way we work. I go through nine hours of video and it takes me a lot longer than nine hours because I watch all nine hours while I'm going through, I'm time stamping and stopping. I select. So it takes me twice as long to watch all that. But however, I'm also going at two times the speed because I'm not looking mm. for all the nuance. I'm looking for what jumps off the plate at me and then I move to it. So tomorrow at midday, I'll start watching these videos for lunch, going through it, boom, 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 to get to final details. But here's the thing. I, I would say always I look with a logical brain first and then I go and say, let me look at the facts of what they're saying. You know, a couple of things come to mind for me. If I were a guitarist, would I cut my finger off? Probably not. If I were a, you know, there's a lot of things that just make you wonder. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say this guy's a saint no. either, because there's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on in their house. I say sure. in this one thing, this should make everybody here feel safe that no matter how much money you make, there's still some crazy in your life, <laughs> sometimes more than not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a very, very codependent um situation well, I, I feel there's also sorry there's also this thing the you know arrested development happens when you stop getting input from other people and if you're mm -hmm. you know if, if i were born rich and lived isolated i might not get the same inputs i get as me if i if you're born poor and you run a lot of people you get different inputs if you're born poor and then you get to a point where you can't get those same inputs that has an impact on our psyches too not i'm not analyzing the guy because i'm not that guy I will, however, say that I've noticed in a lot of people who get rich and famous early and are isolated from society, 
you lose all those inputs. And that can be good or bad. If you're smart enough to be able to keep it in balance, it can be good because then you can pick how you, you know, what, which inputs you get. Don't read all of the press because that'll make you hate yourself. We all know that. <laughs> but yeah, I think somewhere along the way, these guys lose some grounding and we see some well, of that. Uh, yeah. And in his case too, like he has fame of a scope that is beyond oh. You know, this is a guy who would have to go to an African country or somewhere where the movies aren't translated. Even there, it could be very difficult for him to walk anywhere in the world, yes. damn near. Well, probably there's some lost tribe in Brazil who wouldn't recognize him. Maybe. But other than that, uh, it, it's hard for you and I to even comprehend that that level of fame, to never be anonymous anymore to be just so crazy well known that has to do something to your psyche well yeah, the closest i can come is having dinner with dr phil when you walk down the street and people come out of the woodwork with cameras just to take pictures of you i can't imagine what that life is like don't want any part of that life don't want to be that guy and right. you know i get that and he at a fairly young age was famous and has been now for how long like uh, well he's in 1984 so he's i think 35 years career yeah, i can't um, imagine can't imagine yeah yeah he, um, he again i can't it is staggering like you mentioned dr phil who is a c-lister in comparison and i don't mean that badly i'm just saying that right he's famous but he's not like johnnyed up as like famous yeah. you know right well, he's, everything he's, he's jack sparrow he's you know kids grew up watching this guy be characters yes. that you know, are, are legends in, in literature and that kind of thing. And then forget the Jack Sparrow thing. If you never saw him before, everybody knows who he is from that whole series of movies. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Crazy. Oh, yeah. His, his image, his image is all over Disney world or was sure. I think he and says very distinct this. looking, yep. very recognizable. You're not going to confuse him with another actor, you know, it, all of that. So it's like, yeah, he, he's not going anywhere yep. without being known. So that, that is definitely interesting. So, okay. I wanted to share this one with you and okay. it's also got a side by side. So you've got, yep. you know, double action here. I don't know Those why, but this triggered me when I heard it. And I realized later when I asked Sadie, you guys have, um, an admin Sadie. She's amazing by the oh, way. She's the great, prime great minister. Person. She's not, she's not an admin. She keeps, she takes great oh, care uh, of us. Yes. She Sadie is, is our minister. social media. She's our social media prime minister. As we say, she keeps us all in line and she, she takes good care of us. Sadie's wonderful. Yeah. She's, she's a guru. Well, I, I shared it with her on the side and I realized after she had pulled it because she was fascinated too. I hadn't even watched it. I heard That's... it and, and that tripped me up. And I think sometimes I actually hear things that I don't necessarily see, or I can get, you know, blinded by watching, if that makes any sense. I'm the same way. I, I always say to people, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm no physiognomist, but I will say if a person's got giant ears and little bitty eyes, they probably are sound driven. You can look at me. I mean, look at these ears <laughs> and these eyes, you know, so. <laughs> Oh God, my wife says you and your little beady eyes to me. And that's yeah, my yeah. wife who's supposed to love me. Yeah, I go <laughs> my wife it. loves me, but she knows I got little beady eyes too. So <laughs> all right, I'm gonna play this. It's uh I, I'm I want to play it through just to get an impression of feel. It's two minutes and 39 sure. seconds. And um it's just it's very interesting to me. Would you see Whitney um when you were in this herd were in a relationship? Oh a lot. Um, and Whitney would there seems to be no sound. Whitney would come over all the time with her boyfriend for. I can hear it. Dinners and okay, such. I uh, can't. Weird. Miss Hurd always liked having um, people over, you know, for dinner parties and socially shows, you know, social kind of events at her at her at her place. Have you ever done any drugs with uh, Whitney? Yes. <laughs> How often would you do that? With Whitney? Yes, with Whitney. Maybe two, two times, three times, maybe twice, three times. <laughs> Did 
Did there come a time when Whitney moved into um, the penthouses that you owned at the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. And and when was that? I don't remember exactly when it was, but I I uh, do remember that it was after uh, Rocky uh, Pennington and yes, I believe Josh Drew was there already as well. Um, Whitney, wow. <clears throat> I can't remember why she needed a place, but she uh, needed a place, so we gave her penthouse four to live in. And how long did she live there for? Oh boy, uh, uh, on and off for, uh, I suppose a couple of years. And how much rent did you charge her? Uh, nothing. Now you said you did drugs a couple times with with Whitney. Um, what what drugs were you doing with Whitney? W Whitney and I had uh, done a, a line or two of cocaine together. <laughs> Send me this, Eric. When did you start getting introduced to Miss Hurd's friends <laughs> after you started your relationship with her? Almost immediately. Well, in fact, immediately. Yeah. Okay, so before I get um, you know deep into it, do you am I off my rocker for being triggered by this? That there's something going on here. Well, here's what I see. There's a whole lot going on in him that you don't see throughout these nine hours of testimony. I watched. By the way, I didn't watch it all because it just <laughs> finished this afternoon, and I was doing it over the weekend and that stuff. But yeah, so let me give you just five things. I'm just gonna arbitrarily pick five because they're all over the place. His blink rate goes up, which you do not see. You do not see his blink rate go up. So something's up in there. Yes. He's masterful at taking his time and slow pedaling to get that information out once or twice. I, I actually was kind of amused when they said, did you do drugs with her? And he raised one little brow. If you notice that one little brow, which I can't do it the way he did it. But He's anyway, doing a lot of well, the one little There's brow, like, yeah. Yeah. I think was like, containment like uh, mm. everything else is coming out and he's like I, I, yeah sure no i never did and then he said twice yeah i think he's probably hedging a whole lot on this he's twice, not three times twice <laughs> yeah twice <laughs> uh, twice with live omission maybe twice between four and six you know whatever who knows but it's like steve martin do you remember steve martin a wild and crazy guy when he talked about um when he uh smoked pot and he was like yeah. Oh, sometimes I do it at dinner, and then I'm yeah, like, yeah. and then he finally goes, but never at lunch or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah something. Like that. I remember that. I remember the skit. But he's uh, he's running along, and there's just a change in his baseline. There's reason I said send it to me. I don't know if I clip this one or not, and I'll use the mm -hmm. whole thing for later. But he's got a lot of stuff going on. You can see that forehead thing is still there. He does one brow raise when he's talking. I think it's right when he's talking about did he ever do drugs with her when he does the kind of amused thing about, hey, I didn't charge her anything. I think part of that, if you go back and listen to all of his testimonies, he'd gotten in some financial, not maybe not difficulty, but a lot, he had a lot less money than he thought he did, which I, mm. in listening to his testimony, he says is what led him to be an hour and a half late for Amber Heard's 30th birthday, which started one of their major arguments. So yeah, who knows? Maybe he's feeling nervous. No, he lost about millions that. of dollars and sued his management company and won from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know all the backstory again, like I said, but, but when he said that, yeah. And then you see that little nervous <laughs> smile thing. Yeah. You, there's a lot going on here. That's why I said, it'd be good for me to spend some time and roll it over, roll it over, roll it over. But yeah, you, you're, you're dead on. There's a lot moving that was not moving before. And I'm sure he can see her and there's probably some baggage between them. Oh, that. she's got this look of like, yeah, okay. for sure. She's got the, you, you chin tell, well, what's going, you, you know, it just is like, he almost was reacting to her, it seemed, because I don't know the angles. Like, yeah, I don't oh, either. Shit, I'm late. I'm in trouble. There, it felt like a, a little bit of being in trouble with mom quality or, or, or whatever. But that was interesting to me. Earlier, he testified about, about Sis 2. And I could be wrong, but I feel like he's really protective of Whitney. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know all the details there about, but he seemed to really, really like her a lot when you listen like to fondness. him and think, 
Yeah. Yeah. There's a place where he, I, I listened to all of this in the past two days. And again, I probably will forget something, but where he talked about protecting her and about sending her a note and saying, Hey, I really screwed up this time. And so it seems like he had a relationship of some kind with her. He also so said that she was me. lost. Yeah. He had mentioned that she, she was kind of lost, not like mm -hmm. Amber. And for some reason it popped in my head and I'm projecting like crazy. Okay. I, right. I, I'm not a professional, so I can, <laughs> I'm a hack, but I felt for some reason I saw that. And maybe when I'm listening, I, I'm getting it and just kind of the tone, I'm closing everything else out. I was kind of like, were they both sort of hiding together away from Amber? You know, like, like maybe she was sort of just like an ally, you know, like, you know, the world's mm -hmm. going crazy. Sometimes you just sort of are bonding with somebody. You look at them, you're like, Oh my God, you know, I, I, everything's crazy. And it, it felt like it could be something like that. Even not that it is, but it could be. Well, and just remember the people that we love are the people who can make us the craziest because they're closer to us. They know all of our buttons, whether they're doing it intentionally or not. The people we love the most irritate us more than the people who are outside most of the time because of little things. I mean, I always say, if you don't know your adapters, ask your spouse or partner. They do because that's what makes them crazy when you pick and twirl and tap and that stuff because we see each other every day. You know, I've said this to you many times. Everything we know about body language, we've known for a million years. We just blunted it because if you think about this, familiarity breeds contempt. That the more you know somebody, the more liable you are to get irritated with them over smaller things. So, for yeah, sure. I think then you're looking for an out. And by the way, you're looking for an out and you can't walk outside on the sidewalk without getting mobbed. You find people close to you. And I think when you find out these guys are hanging out with like he's Marilyn Manson's buddy and he's betting. Oh God, buddy. the funniest line of the they trial. Can hide. Yeah. That was the funniest line of the trial. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry when he said, oh, I love that one. I, I love it. I, I gave him a, did you ever a, give him a, drugs? A I gave him a pill. So he, he would stop talking so much. <laughs> just like, I don't know why. I mean, it's not like I've ever seen it. I just could visualize that. And that's why he's brilliant too, is he paints such pictures you know he's a mass masterful storyteller not every actor is by the way just because they're an actor doesn't mean they're good at stories see alec right. baldwin in his instagrams and that's an actor without a script so it's it's a little different i think johnny depp is maybe a more evocative because he's a musician first hmm. but yeah, I, 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 I think when when i watched him today when he talked about giving marilyn manson a drug to shut him up he kind of even smiled a little at the end because oh, he, he knew he's laughing <laughs> It's just like this is like a sort of a dick thing to do, but he's sort of a pain in the ass. It, 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 it was so relatable because he just, I, I'm sorry, that was funny. And yeah, it was funny. Ultimately, okay, you've watched many, many hours of testimony. Overall, how do you come away thinking about Johnny Depp? Well, here's the thing. I don't know. I didn't know a thing about him as a person. I, you know, I read he cut his finger off a long time ago. There's all kinds of stuff you read. And I, I try not to judge because I don't know until I watch these things and it helps. When I watched this, I felt like he had some containment of character, like he's doing a bit. But I also, when they got into it and started poking on him, he, you know, he seemed like he was being, I'll say this at a high level until I watch, seemed like he was being cooperative snarky at times being a person just being a person even with that act that he came in with now I, we've done a cover of the deposition with amber heard in the past and i'll say this you know usually in domestic situations forget the violent part forget the violent part don't nobody sitting here say greg hartley said domestic violence is both people's fault that's not what i say but I do think that escalation in relationships and craziness in relationships usually has two components because chemistry. Now, there's yeah. never a time when it's okay to be violent with another person, especially a domestic partner. I mean, it's just not acceptable. But I do think that a lot of people have volatility in their relationships because one person does a little thing, another person does a little thing, another person does a little thing, another person does a little thing. And it just escalates. The other thing, and I say this to, I've said it to the behavior panel guys, I think a lot of times drama comes from stranded intellectual capacity. And by that, I mean somebody who's too smart for what they're doing or doesn't have enough to do. They're going to find a way to entertain their brain because humans are industrial or industrious creatures. We look for things to do with our minds. And if I got nothing to do, I'm going to find something to do. Okay. And it depends on your personality as to whether you're one that likes to pick a fight and escalate or whether you're one that's like, just leave me alone. Let me go read. 
who you are has a lot to do with that. So this chemistry between two people, who knows what it is. It doesn't look like they were together very long. So it might have been, you know, gasoline and matches as far as I can tell from outside. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, it definitely seems that way. Not oil and water, gasoline and matches yeah. definitely yeah. fits for me. Greg, thank you so much. You guys are covering it this week on yes. Behavior Panel. I mean, everybody who knows my channel knows your channel. They have to. But the Behavior Channel on YouTube. Um, follow Greg separately, too. I, I don't think you have a YouTube channel, but he's, you're on Twitter, um, yeah. everywhere if you, else. If you if you just go to readbodylanguage.com, that's my web page. And I've got Perfect. a it's fairly new web page. I stood back up so you can find all of us. I, you know, look, most of what I do is Behavior Panel. I do some news. Um, I, you know, I do all kinds of news. But recently, it's been Newsmax who likes me. And is bringing me back. But yeah, I do news. I do a lot of that kind of thing. And so I try to put things up as they occur. But Eric, you're, you're the reason we're all together. So thank you, man. Appreciate the invite today. Well, thank you so much, man.